There's one common skill that virtually all of our 50 plus professional traders have. They know how to read the tape. This is a skill that's rarely taught to independent traders, but in this video, you'll see a great example of how one of our pro traders used tape reading to find and pounce on a great scalping opportunity. I'm Mike Bellafiore, and we're a proprietary trading firm in New York City with numerous highly successful traders, almost all of whom started their trading careers with SMB. All of us at SMB hope you find this channel to be a wonderful place for you to learn and grow as a trader. Once you understand the, the catalyst setup and then the trades that you're looking for, reading the tape provides a tremendous amount of opportunity to enhance that edge, not just in identifying better reasons to get in or your reasons to sell, um, but by identifying the probabilities as they're constantly shifting within the trade. So I'm very excited to do this today. Um, I really hope that, that we can get back into a routine of doing these on a weekly basis, multiple times a week, um, because there's so much value in this. and. And I know that, that people think reading the tape is hard and it doesn't add a lot of value. And, and you know, it, it's, it's something that has a lot of mysticism around it. It's just amazing when these opportunities fall into your lap, right? Yeah. And it's almost, it's almost like eerily obvious. And, and for me personally, when I see stuff on the tape sometimes, I'm like, it can't be that easy. Yeah. But like it kind of winds up being that easy a lot. And probably because of all the reps that we get in this stuff and because we've taken the time to dedicate ourselves to it. But I'm super excited to get into this example. So if you can set the context for, for us, um, you know, the catalyst to set up and then the trade that was presented to you, and then we can get into the tape. So this is when Peggy in October, early October, I want to say it was the 10th. Um, it had, it was a sub dollar stock that on day one went right up to like 130, it closed that. And then over the next two days, uh, gapped up, held, gapped up, held. Uh, this one ended up going from seventy-five cents to seven dollars. But this was a day. This was a day two trade on it. Uh, honestly, I forget what the catalyst was. I wasn't prepared with the catalyst on this one. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, knowing that it's a day two, that's important. One thing to think about would be potentially as we're talking about catalyst scoring this a catalyst that you might run into. So. If it's a catalyst, that's a 10 out of 10 positive or like a six out of 10 negative, you know, like those are varied trades that you look for. And it's not the purpose of what we're doing here today because this is about tape, but it's just a best practice moving forward. And the reason is, is because you'll find these catalysts and the value of them shifting so much over time. Yeah. So you'll have we talked about it at the 11 a.m. today. You'll have a negative eight out of 10 catalyst or a very neutral catalyst that'll have a ridiculously bullish result. You'll have a very bearish catalyst that are very, very bullish catalyst that will have a neutral to, to incredibly bearish result at times. Um, understanding just having a running narrative of how the market is, is interpreting different, interpreting different price action is really valuable. So. Yeah, I had it, I had the set of catalyst straight in my DRC, but with, uh, reading the tape, I, for, I forgot to review that one. Yeah, so this trade I actually was one that I was small long and I ended up flipping short. Because of what you saw on the tape? Uh, the long, not really so much the tape, but the short that I flipped to was the short's like the main trade. This is, I just have like a small long that I. No, you flipped uh, from, from being long because of short. this being a day two to a short based on right. what you saw on the tape. Great. Right. Okay, cool. I'm excited. Yeah. If you want to learn three real world setups, that our professional traders use, including the simple but highly effective setup that we teach all of our new traders, and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner. Check out the free online trading workshop that we're currently running. This is a 100% free, intensive workshop where you're gonna learn more in a couple of hours than from years of online education. So don't miss it. Uh, so this one had a strong opening drive from about two to three dollars which was um a pretty significant move i on the pullback it was above vwap coming right into the support that was around 260. so this is where i looked at for a quick long scalp up 
Uh, there was a 269 um, bidder, which was where I took the trade off of. Yeah. Uh, let see where I take it on the next pullback. All right, so I start bidding in some here, risking right under this 269, or it was like 265, but I had this 269 bidder that was there. This was added some more in on the pop. So I was long, long 500 was the most that I took on the scout just yeah. because I wasn't the most confident in this one. It wasn't something I was willing to put on too much risk on. And it's something that we talked about again in the, in the 11 a.m. today, and we've talked about more is, is you want to adjust your sizing based on your confidence in the, in the catalyst, the setup and the trade. And so right. if you're, you know, even if this is an eight out of 10, if it's really, you know, on your risk profile for the day, right? If this sure. is a setup that you're developing, you know, really an eight is actually like a five, yeah. right? Because you're, no, you're no. kind of toning it down depending on your opportunity set of the day. It doesn't mean you're checking out, but it just means you're lowering your personal stop on the day. Yeah. How much you're willing to right. risk in each trade. That's one thing that I felt this past month that I did a lot better compared to previous months was exponential sizing on different setups. Yeah. Which was, it's crazy how much of a game changer that is when you really score a setup out of it and then put the appropriate risk to it. Yeah. So what are you seeing with the tape here? Yeah. Yeah. This I'm trying to fast forward to the part. But what's interesting to me is, okay, what should be, ha I look at the chart, right? So I'm starting with the chart and then I'm drilling down to the right. tape and I'm looking at the chart and I'm like, why is it taking it so long to break out? Right. Right. Like, like that reversal off the low, it shouldn't take this long to break out. hundred percent. And also, I mean, you see this, we had a resistance line right here, which is starting to form somewhat of support. Yep. It's 275 better stepping up into this level. Yeah. Uh, pretty close to, yeah, you see how big the bid is right here on the yeah. sale. Huge, oh. huge size there. Why can't they run it away from there? That's like, it felt like when I was in this long after a while, I was like, this feels like a little sketchy in the long. Right. Just because like, if that thing drops, this thing's dropping right after it. Well, even that, they're showing that much size. Yeah. It's almost right? like the uh it's almost like the SMMT example from the other day. Yeah. Where they had that like one point two million dollar offer. They were making the tape seem like it was really thick the whole time. Yeah. They kept rewarding shorts for every time it kept pulling back, pulling back. And as soon as they dropped that 1.2 million offer, it just went right up into a hole. It's, it's really interesting, right? Like, like yeah. we're, we're using the price action or the tape in this case as, as a narrative vehicle, right? So like the fact that we had that size, why can't it just like run away from that price? Right. That seemed weird. Yeah. It should run. It should literally like like just sprint away from that price because if you're short, you should be so afraid of that that yeah. size. It's not just afraid of that size like, oh, man, I got to get out of my position, but more like, OK, if they step this thing up at all and they actually are going to keep walking it up, this thing's going to go way up. But yeah. the fact that it doesn't even respond is the most interesting thing. I mean, you see, it went away, sense. but they're still holding the 275 yeah. level. Yeah. It's not with that amount of unnecessary size. Yeah. It's almost like they like they like wanted to get it chased up. And then Yeah. They were enticing logs into it on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Enticing yeah. is a good word, a good, a good descriptive word there. Because it yeah. did feel like they were enticing longs to 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 get involved. So yep. So on this push up, this is where I started scalping out of the long. Yeah. Um, was it the discomfort in the way that the price action was? Because I look at the chart and I'm like, oh, that's, you know, this is what you want to see. You want to see the long. But like when we when we've been watching the tape, that just feels sketchier. It feels like this is an opportunity to to 
take some profits versus an opportunity to kind of hold for more. The, the tape was definitely a big part of it for that one, but also just like the feel of how slow it was. Yes. When it like this thing with all that size there, especially after it started basing over that resistance, like I was expecting this thing to start taking off. Yeah. It just felt like way too, it felt like it was taking way too long. Yeah. And that little clock going off in your head, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we had that one and then 157 was, yeah. 57. Oh, so it looks like we had that little move and then it failed. But we don't have a trigger really to get short. Not well, so that's the thing on this is that this this bid right here drops, and I never took a short on this because I didn't it wasn't something I was really confident because yeah, it could have dropped, but it wasn't something like a top setup that I was really comfortable with. But I, yeah. I end up taking I'll show you like where I take the short. Or, but that's that's the point that that I think is really imperative to make sure that we're making is we're just building a narrative out. We're not adjusting our position sizing immediately. We're not like, man, that long didn't work. I'm hitting it short now. I bet you it'll yeah. work on the short side because we actually don't have the information for that. Yeah. What we do is what we have the information for is that didn't feel right to the upside, but it doesn't mean it's going to go lower. It just, you know, is information. And then we can let that that tape give us more information as we go along. And that bidder is interesting. But I, I would agree with you. You don't have enough information to say if this bid drops, it's going to go way lower. Like, that's just not yeah. this is not true. Yeah. So, again, obviously, huge size there drops and as soon as it drops, this thing comes down with it. But again, we didn't have that much information to really take it. Yeah, it just gets more interesting now. That's all. Yeah. Well, after I saw that right there, that's what really started to entice me into a short. I wanted to wait for it to re-pop up or show signs of another short because that right there with all that size dropping was a sign to me that a potential short's going to come up. But it, it's a sign that you could have something. It doesn't mean yeah. that you can just hit it right there and it'll work. 100%. It's a sign that you're going to have something, though. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It's like if you were, it's, I don't know, do you ever, have you ever gone fishing like with, with a bobber? Oh, yeah. 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 So like when you're fishing with a bobber, when the bobber starts going up and down, you don't have something. Yeah. You, it's a sign that you might have something, but if your bobber starts wiggling at all and you just start reeling it in, you're going to lose what you had. Yeah. But if you're like, oh, I might have something here and you kind of approach it with a little bit of, of, of finesse, you can walk into something really good. So Yeah, once the bobber goes under, then you know you got something. Then you know you got something. Yeah. Um, so I was nibbling in some shore here on this pop-up. Yep. Still holding above VWAP, though, so do want to be somewhat cautious. But in my eyes, as long as it's still under this, this candle that happened where that bid drop it's yep. not quite a long and i would still be favoriting a short if it sets up yep it consolidates in this little range for the next like hour but i'm trying to show where it hits 274. It's 274, you see them pop up, yep. and it rejects right off that. Pretty hard, too. You got size coming over, 5,000, 9,000, 7,000. So on this trade, too, where I'm adding in, I play, uh, my stop, my mental stop was right above this. Yep. I want to say it was like 76, two cents over. Two cents over. That's it. Because you know that that level should hold now. Should hold for sure. And I know also when trading these low floats, they like to liquidity hunt you. And if you put your stop, just even a cent over, they'll hit you right out and then stuff it down. Yep. Yeah, you'll get a hunt order for one cent above, you'll get stopped out, and then it'll come right back down. That's <laughs> yeah. happened so many times. It's yeah. Um, but they're still holding it above VWAP, which is still something to take note of. Yep my eyes um i was also short 500 before and then on this down part i was just scalping some out just to realize some gains through there 
Um, back up to 274. So hold on one second. Let's let's pause the tape and let's talk about an important concept of what reading the tape is and what it's not, right? You saw the stuff at 274 and then you saw the attempt at follow through to the downside and that didn't happen. Reading the tape is not saying 274 is the level. I'm not adjusting my position sizing at all because of what I saw in the tape. It is not YOLO holding. Reading the tape is using the information that's presented to develop a thesis of what could happen in the very short term yeah. and then taking action off of that. Yep. Well, I mean, you can see like we had that stuff here, but like, also we holding above view up, like we had, we had a decently like two or three cent wick down here too. Yes. So like this level was holding. One thing that I give Dan a lot of credit for is usually when I was trading these things prior, I would be getting into my position here, not covering any down here adding back in here but then say that goes over i'm out of it when i yeah. could be scalping out this range while keeping a core position up here and it's the difference between trading it as as if the reading the tape was the setup and trading it as if the reading the tape is an element of the trade itself because yeah. what you said before is you are trading the entire setup and hoping that you're right on it yeah. but if you're moving around in it you're actually just taking the trade and moving around in that based on the tape itself. It's a yeah. it's an element of the trade. It's not you're not trading the entire setup. The setup is still there, but you're just taking advantage of the fact that, okay, it's touching a lot of prices. I can wiggle around in this a little bit. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like when you can clearly identify a range like this too, you might as well be scalping in and out of this. It just frees you up from having to feel like, I hope I'm right here. I really yeah. hope I'm right here. Yep. So again, you see that 274, and then you saw 20,000 offer come in, 6,000, 7,500, 8,000. So there's definitely sellers up in this 274 range. Yep. And it's a weird price to have sellers at, right? Yeah. Like they're not showing in the same way. It's not like one print is there that won't lift. It's just like they're yeah. they're they're kind of hidden. Yeah, they're there. I was to say it's kind of it's kind of like a hidden seller's just waiting yeah. in there. But this two seventy four was resistance over here, and then resistance here. The turn into support here, so that's why I had that line at two seventy four yeah. there, and then the tape also confirmed that price action that was there. Yeah. Like, yeah, when I was in this trade, I was just sitting here and I was like, 274, it, like, it can't get over 274 at all. I was yeah. like, hey, because it was stuck in this consolidation for so long. And I was like, dude, 274 just won't, it won't go over. It won't go yeah. over. Yeah. And again, that's information that's telling us there's a resistance level there, but it doesn't mean that it's going to crack lower. Yeah. Well, all it does is it tells us that that, okay, we can base our risk off of this. And we can make trade decisions off of this information moving forward. But it doesn't tell us that we can YOLO size or be really aggressive or increase our size or anything like that right there. Because that's just sort of guessing <laughs> versus actually trading off of it. Yeah. So in this one, we actually get an open lower that kind of flushes down, but then kind of got soaked and it comes right back up to 274. What do you think should happen right there? Um, if that, like for me, when I was in that one, that one was a little uncomfortable, like as a little sign of like- Super like, uncomfortable. Size. Yeah, like yeah. don't size in because it opens up lower than it closed at. Looks like it's about to flush down and then soaked up. So in my mind, I was saying, there's definitely a bunch of shorts who piled in on that thinking that that was the crack, which it wasn't. So it kind of soaked up. So, so what, like but what yeah. should, what should happen off of that? For the short? No. What should happen off of that price action? Oh, oh yeah. For this, like after that soak happened, this thing should get over 274. Like there should be very little hesitation, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. After that, I, so I, that thing should spray up. I agree. Yeah, that that's what's in my mind. I'm like making sure that I'm stopping out at 276. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like like that's all I'm thinking about because at that point I'm like this short it really should go higher. Yeah. And I need to make sure I'm not going to be be in you trouble. You see it again literally hit 274. So there's definitely a hidden seller up there who is protecting that level. Yeah. Comes in with 10 10,000, 5,000, 5,000. The spray happens yeah around here. But again, yeah, you're right. After that, that candle right there, this thing should be spraying up right now. I mean, it should be 283, 285, like, yeah. like without hesitation, like. So that 600 added two more after that reject again, because that one should have sprayed up. It's exactly right. It should have sprayed up and it didn't. It's already getting tight up here in this range too. Yes. And then I was thinking that should spray right there on how tight it's starting to get up in this, this range. Yes. Where do you think this could go if it breaks to the downside? I was saying that when I was trading this, I was thinking this is such a, seems like it's so long enticing in here that yeah. if this thing does flush, it, in my mind, was going to be just like any, any other of these low flow, big flushes that come down, like a one candle that sprays down 25, 30 cents. Yeah, that could happen. It could unwind slowly. There could be something distinct that changes. Those are all potential outcomes that occur, particularly out of that situation where we had the rebid as aggressively as it was. And it's almost like there's there's like this last ditch effort from the buyers, yeah. right? They were like, no, 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 we're not going to let this fall. We're going to chase it up. And then the sellers were just like, thank you. I'll keep selling right here. And the seller hasn't had to step down. But like, you know, it just feels like there's like just this, there's going to be a move and it's going to be a nasty move. And once it starts, you don't want to fight it. You want to be, you want to be on the right side of that train. Yeah. And for a lot of these too, I mean, if it's one of those slow sort of breakdowns, I like to, with tapes confirming the scale into those, but when it has that flush down candle immediately, like you see, I'll start to cover in, but so the tape starts to really speed up. But you don't know, you know, we can put our position on, right? Especially after that, like, dip and, 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 and kind of rebid. Yeah. As soon as that doesn't break higher, that's where we put our position on because we don't know how it's going to unwind. Yeah. We just know that, oh, that 274 seller should have been cleared based on that price action. They couldn't clear them. So that's a really, really good level. Mm -hmm. And I'll put the trade on and let's see what happens. And if it moves fast, yeah, you need to cover some. If it moves slow, exactly like you said, okay, now I'm going to scale into this. I'm going to size into it as it goes in my favor, right? You're thinking through these things as they're happening. You're not saying, this is my position. I'm standing right here and I hope it works. Yeah. You're listening to what the tape t starts telling you and, and, and keeps telling you. Yeah, so on this drop right here too, I did cover some because on the way, it felt like it was getting soaked back up again. Yeah. But it again, didn't push that much higher but it felt like it was getting soaked up there again you're using the opportunity so yeah that's perfect playing, kept playing yeah. the range playing the range yeah i didn't think that that was the breakdown um, i think it's this one But again, though, on that, on this candle here, yep. the tape did start to speed up. So it, it looked to all first come in. Like, it looked like that was going to be the candle. It did. And it wasn't, which is why I did cover some, because that that felt like that was going to be the pull. And it comes back up. 
then that's just another trap of some shorts right there again. Every time you get that speed in the tape, right? You see, you see the, the time and sales pick up, right? Yeah. It's not just the level two on the left. It's the time and sales kind of just to the right of that. Every t that's the speed of the tape, right? Because the level two is always going to bounce around a little bit as new participants come in and they can change their offers. But the speed yeah. of the prints, that's, that's going to tell you, okay, this should start to work. But you need to see that speed continue. And if it doesn't, yeah. you have to cover some. Yeah. 100%. And that's a little bit of that timing game that, that we can play. But, you know, we know that the sellers are 274. So we don't have to be perfect. Yeah. We just know that if we start to see what we think should lead to something and it doesn't, we do need to take risk off. We do need to take risk down a little bit and then look for something that's a little more real. The speed on the tape is super interesting though. That's, that's a good factor to pick up on. But there you can see it start to pick up, pick up. Yep. There you go. Quick drop. Yeah. Throw out some bids there. The speed, the speed never slowed down. It actually sped up too, yeah. which yeah. is very interesting. And then the volume coming in as well. You see how late the volume is in coming in though, right? Yeah. If you're it, like the speed of the tape picked up and then the volume didn't pick up until later. So if you're yeah. trading it on volume alone versus trading it on the tape, you're missing that trade or you're, or you're having to take undue risk in that trade. Yep. So I got... When this thing dropped, I had some bids out at VWAP, and then I saw it a little bit left on. Then when it cracked out, I covered some more just because on the flush down here, I see them like a bunch of times, especially on something on a daily that's clearly front side. Yes. Yeah. When they, on an intraday chart, like a one minute chart, have like a strong morning push, and then they have these flush downs, but they stay above VWAP, that's like what the real traps are. Because as a short, yeah. you're saying, oh, this is a flush, this is a flush. As long as they keep it over view up and keep, and then they start grinding it higher, higher. That's like where the real short trap is. I challenge you to do, to think about one thing in this though. What's that? You had so many checks in your favor because of the time that it couldn't lift above that level yeah. that yes, I agree. Putting the bids above or right around view up is the right thing to do when we initiated this trade the first time. Because what if it would have flashed down, you would have gotten gotten some that you want and then back up. It's just the time and the number of times that it really should have gone higher and it didn't, that I almost want to use that as information and not put those bids out, right? right? If I have the or, bids out, just pull not, them. Yeah. yeah. Or at least not cover full position, take off a fourth, like just, just something they check out. Like honestly, the more yeah, the more time that goes by, and the more times that this has gone up and can't break out, the smaller my, the smaller amount I'm gonna cover less and less and less quickly. Right. So like maybe I would have covered thirty percent on that first wash the first time if it would have gotten down there. Okay, yeah. you know lifts and can't lift. Maybe I'll cover twenty percent this time. Okay, that you know it tried to lift two seventy four again and couldn't. Maybe I'll cover ten percent this time. And like, obviously my fingers on the trigger of like, I'll hit out faster, but that was more and more information. And we're not talking about that much, but when you extrapolate it over time, you're talking about, you know, improving your P&L by 10%, 15%, 20%. And if you do that consistently, because of you've got more information present, it takes you out of that default mode and puts you into the, I'm just going to let the stock tell me what it wants to do. Right. Um, so I end up on this after it flushed down, obviously all longs are underwater. Yeah. Um, and on these, I like to use, if I once like a flush like that, it goes under, I'm using VWAP as a, as a hard stop, but then I like trailing these with the EMA yep. for most part, like HTGM right now flushes under VWAP and then just holds that EMA like very cleanly. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing that's interesting is why do you think you, you like trading it off the EMA? I honestly, it's just like, it's like a, a trailing stop to come with you. 
why do you think that it's a trailing step? What is the EMA telling you about the participants in the stock after a kill candle or crack like that? People are selling into pops. Um, yeah, but what maybe more specifically? Like an EMA, right? So let's talk about what an EMA is really quickly. An EMA, really quickly. An EMA is essentially a moving average that throws out the further away variables and weights overweights the, the closer variables. So in this case, a moving average based on price. So it's discounting more and more the prior things that happened and, 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 and counts at a higher level the things that are happening right now. So the fact that we have that, you can use the EMA and lean against that because it's showing what the participants who are involved in the stock right now are thinking about the price action. Right. Right. So that's why it becomes a good trailing stop, not because it's an EMA, but because of what the EMA tells you about the way the participants right now are behaving in that stock. Right. I've had a, a, a couple of some of my best trades that I have is after a kill candle, riding the EMAs down. Yep. All right. Anything else you want to cover on this? No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, it ends up just kind of riding these EMAs all the way down. And I was just scalping out the way down. Yeah. That, yeah, that's basically the whole. No, I love the tape. I love the speed and the way that you used the price action and the speed to cover on the way down when the speed didn't follow through. But then also saw we saw a great example of how the speed on the tape can tell you so much more, particularly when combined with with that that hidden seller that was there. That seller just wouldn't lift. And that was the information. So overall, I mean, I really like this. I think nine out of 10. I think the one thing that would be different and would make this a 10 out of 10 of, of how you used the tape in your trade would have been to make that adjustment with with, you know, this really should have gone higher. Yeah, exactly. And it's a tough thing to do to get out of that default, but th that default mindset is is can be a huge help at times. But in a situation like this, it actually takes away from the opportunity that you were offered. Yeah. So that would be the one change that yeah. I, I would I really think maybe focusing it on. But everything else was very good. So. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve, and you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition, the traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and getting access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.